barking it up. Pull it down. Hidden from curious eyes, a strange craft is developing. This man, his family and friends, are trying to build a man-powered airplane. This is Tyler McCrady, who may not look like an airplane engine, but he is. And this is his father, Paul McCrady, an expert in aerodynamics who set about building the kind of flying machine that men have dreamed of for centuries. From the earliest of times, we've wanted to fly like birds, but every design for a man-powered plane has been hampered by the same drawbacks, the extremely weak power of the human engine. The strongest cyclist pedaling at full speed can barely produce half a horsepower. When the Wright brothers first put a combustion engine on their glider, they achieved what man couldn't do under his own power. Their engine was small, just 12 horsepower, but it produced over 30 times the power of a man. Today we've virtually conquered the realm of flight, but that early dream, the simple dream of man-powered flight, has remained as elusive as ever. In fact, the largest cash prize in aviation history, the Kramer Prize, was offered in 1959 by the Royal Aeronautical Society in London for the building of the first successful man-powered airplane. To win, a plane must fly a figure-eight course around two markers spaced a half mile apart. Dozens of serious designs have the same failing. The construction techniques quickly add more weight than a man's muscle can lift. They might get off the ground and then fly for a distance, but none could turn successfully in the air. The elaborate constructions had another major flaw. With the pilot pedaling furiously inside, they flew. But the slightest crash was disastrous. In 1973, after 14 years of failures, the Kramer Prize was raised to 50,000 pounds, nearly $100,000. It was that incentive which got Paul McCrady thinking about a man-powered plane. McCrady spent much of a month-long summer vacation in 1976 hang gliding with his family. His teenage sons, Tyler and Parker, are highly trained hang glider pilots. McCrady says he was daydreaming one day when the concept for a radically different man-powered plane came to him. From an article he'd written on hang glider safety, he knew a glider used just over one horsepower. He thought if he tripled the dimensions of a hang glider wing while keeping the weight the same, he could build a plane that would fly with only one-third horsepower. And that's just about the amount of energy that could be produced by a person pedaling a bicycle. McCrady decided to try putting together this giant wing on weekends with some help from his family and friends. Hope that's where we wanted it. The construction materials were as simple as the design. Thin aluminum tubing for stiffness, piano wire for support. The wing, designed by one of McCrady's associates, Peter Lissiman, was covered with mylar and held together with tape. The huge plane would weigh next to nothing because it needed hardly any spars or ribs. It would just hang from the wires attached to the top post. 
pull that end forward, Jim. The span of the giant wing was wider than a DC-9. And a small second wing was added in front for stability. Yet empty, the whole plane weighed only 55 pounds. Which way is the wind, Tyler, where you are? We'll just try it. When pushed, it floated. The bottom wire is lifting the pilot's weight. And to McCready's delight, it held together. Then they add a propeller, and the plane they call the Gossamer Condor is born. Here we go. something which has very little control, but it did control. During the week, while the regular business of life goes on, the Gossamer Condor is never far from McCready's mind. The wing, I think, twisted a bit. Then come the long, intense weekends at the desert airstrip. The main problem is McCready can't rely on the established rules of aerodynamics for such slow flight. They aren't yet discovered. He has to find them out himself. Right, right, right. Oh, pull it! Grab it, grab it, grab it! No, that wasn't slow. You got, uh, no, the prop's didn't get hurt at all. Okay, I'm holding this thing up. Hey, let's quit for the day, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Quick, get a picture. Can you push that? The plane's simple design has a built-in advantage over all other man-powered planes. It can be easily repaired. Or it can be taken apart, hey. altered, and be back flying almost oh, overnight. Huge wind back here. By Christmas time, all of the McCradys are spending nearly every spare moment on the project. That's a real cool. Or yeah. On one or anything else. So maybe we should just it's a little uh, bit to the right. But okay. Right. Do you want to just try it? Yeah. Okay. With Tyler peddling for all he's worth, the great gossamer wing takes off Not under its own right. power. Can you read the airspeed? Okay. Talk it to it. It seems to work so well that McCready thinks he'll have the Kramer Prize won within a few oh. months. Yet while the team labors in the California desert, something happens which makes international headlines. For 10 years, students at a Japanese university have been building man-powered planes in the hopes of winning the Kramer Prize. The Japanese stork is carefully crafted of balsa wood and handmade paper. On January 2nd, 1977, this plane makes a straight, mile-long flight. It lasts four and a half minutes. But no one knows if it can actually turn. Tough handmade paper. I wonder how you make paper by hand. There has never before been a serious challenger for the Kramer Prize. Now it seems like a race between two planes. For weeks, they worry and work late into the night. They fear that the Japanese plane will win the prize. They worry because the Gossamer Condor makes lots of short flights, okay. but no real progress. Go up higher, Tyler. I can't. But you found that thing, huh? It's hard to steer. McCready decides the plane needs a more powerful engine than his son, Tyler. Just try and keep it going in a straight line. Because it doesn't seem like you're going fast enough to get the wings out. 
point down a little. It's up Greg a Miller, a bicycle racer, gives them that extra power, which more than makes up for the extra weight he adds. But Greg has no flying experience, and the fragile gossamer condor takes some getting used to. Grab it. And, uh, I wonder, it seems to be much harder to fly. What seems to be causing the problem is that the mylar wing is stretching out of shape and slowing down the plane. Today was another phase in getting where we're going, but flight-wise, we didn't do any better than we did two weeks ago. Uh, the fact that we made changes in between times has let us see that those changes uh, didn't help. The way I'm doing it, you'll find it. But they aren't about to give up. Changes continue to be made. Because of the simple design, new ideas are incorporated within minutes. Loosening the bottom strings changes the shape of the wing. A manila folder taped onto the propeller increases its size. The mylar covering is pulled to taut once more. Do you want to try next? Hello. Almost half a year of hard work, persistence, and inventiveness begin to pay off. He'll cheer him up. He was wondering where all his muscle was today. Five, five, six. Oh, the prop looks as though it's going slow, man. At 10 miles per hour, the Gossamer Condor is the slowest flying five, six, plane three. in the world. Man, oh, going for broke. No, I think he's... That's a U.S. record. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long that was. In late January, yeah, well, the weeks of frustration again. end when it flies for three minutes. <laughs> landing nearly a quarter mile from its takeoff point. Though Greg is exhausted and the plane has never made a turn, McCready still decides to try for the Kramer Prize. The rules for winning are quite strict. A man-powered plane must take off by itself it must reach a height of 10 feet at the beginning of the course. It must make a complete left turn and a right turn. It must clear the same 10-foot height again at the end. Only up to here. Official observers lay out the half-mile distance between the two markers. Yeah. So Greg, anytime you want to go, everyone's ready. And the wind looks crooked but it's awfully weak so i think it may be okay the key bar to measure the 10 foot start and finish is made from leftover gossamer condor parts Plane makes it over the 10-foot mark with just inches to spare on this go of the course. But the constantly changing winds uh, defeat their effort. Yeah, it looks like it's okay. yeah it was, that's okay. General performance just goes blue when there's this much wind yeah. compared to before. The Gossamer Condor is still operating on the very margins of flight. It lacks precision. It lacks control. <laughs> According to McCready's calculations, this flap on the tip of each wing should give enough control to turn the plane. It doesn't, and even McCready wonders why. So, back to the drawing board. Maybe one little clock piece in the middle to tie it Late night sessions become more frequent between McCready and his co-builders. That takes the compression. The best it ever looked to me was when the weight was in the back with Tyler on board. Yeah. Right, Peter? New ideas are tested on the computer at McCready's company. Finally, there's a weekend without wind and they can do some real testing. 
They try rudders and flaps to see if anything will make the gossamer condor turn. Okay, point it up a little. You're flying. Point up. Nothing seems to help. When theory fails, sometimes a model helps. Uh, you did your... By turning a miniature gossamer condor in the dense water, McCready is able to feel how the real plane is affected by the mass of air around its huge square wings. Computer tests confirm that there is no way to apply enough force on this square-shaped wing to make it turn. And even with the threat of the Japanese plane winning the Kramer Prize, McCready decides to tear the gossamer condor apart and rebuild it. With the plane in pieces, they move to a new airport, Shafter, in California's Central Valley, where the wind is much quieter. Here, tests can be more effective. later, a new version of the Gossamer Condor is ready. The basic design remains, but now the pilot's seat is enclosed. The wing, shaped and stiffened with styrofoam, is swept back and narrowed toward the tips to facilitate turning, and its underside is covered with mylar. With these changes, it weighs only about 10 pounds more. Let's get up about three feet. Okay. And 35. Now the Gossamer Condor flies with greater stability than before. twist of the front wing, it starts making turns. Right now! Go to the right a little. March 5th, 1977. Point up, the new around. Gossamer Condor is only five days old and sets a world's record for the longest man-powered flight Point in right. history. Five minutes, five seconds. This is kept secret because the team wants no one copying the Gossamer Condor's design. You're doing great. Hey, Super yeah. right, man. Right on. Is that a world record? What is it, like the minutes? Do you know how long you were up? I don't realize it. Well, thank you. Have a good day with no wind. Yeah. 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 Point it down a little. Point it down a little more. You're doing fine. Greg clears the 10-foot starting pole with three feet to spare. Can you hold this wing? Uh, this wing is okay, but I gotta get the other wing. Uh, 
What a day. The damage is just a few bends in the aluminum pole and some torn mylar. It will be repaired within 24 hours. Okay. But the repaired plane doesn't work as well as before. Point up. They only now begin to realize the extreme sensitivity of the giant wing. Any wrinkles, any stretching, any twist, and the pilot cannot control the plane. So much! In late April, Greg Miller must leave for Belgium to continue his professional cycling career, and the project acquires a new pilot, Brian Allen, an expert hang glider pilot and cyclist who slips into the seat without missing a stroke. All through the summer months, they search for the key to winning the Kramer Prize. Nobody really knows what the right way is. It may just require doing it a bunch of times. This doesn't seem to, to provide that sideways force. Even as they search, Tyler invents a plane of his own. The cardboard acts as a mountain, forcing the wind to soar the plane. <laughs> After listening to the team's suggestions, McCready still has to make the final decisions himself. That jarring crash in March provides a clue to controlled turning. If a small and unintentional twist in the wingtip caused the plane to veer so strongly, maybe it can be used to make the plane turn. A lever is installed to pull on the wires, which slightly twists the large wing. The team finds that putting a twist in the tip of the main wing causes a slight drag on that wing, slowing it so that the plane turns. The twist also lifts the inner wing, keeping it nearly level during the turn. It works, and by early August, the plane seems ready for the Kramer course. A slight breeze hits the plane. A control wire jumps off a pulley. Again, the crash is an opportunity to rebuild, and McCready has the team remake every part as light as possible. Where are the nails still? In two weeks, the Gossamer Condor re-emerges, seven pounds lighter. The wing is carefully shaped and trimmed, the twisting lever precisely adjusted. They make several more attempts at the Kramer course. One flight lasts over eight minutes. I know, I know. Did I make it? Bill, did he make it? Not quite. No, not quite. No. Oh, in the, air. the Gossamer Condor has now made over 400 test flights. Yet the Kramer Prize still eludes them. Dawn, August 23rd, 1977. Their tenth official attempt and McCready, as usual, is making changes right up to the last minute. He cuts an air vent to cool the pilot's legs. At 7.30 a.m., the breeze stills. It is now a sophisticated aircraft, generations removed from the simple structure they once thought would easily win the prize. The Gossamer Condor swings its huge wing around the first turn with ease.
Six minutes and two turns later, the only obstacle left is the 10-foot finish pole. Man-powered flight has become a reality. Paul McCready and his team are awarded the 50,000-pound Kramer Prize by the Royal Aeronautical Society. After thousands of years of man pursuing the goal of man-powered flight, Paul McCready and the Gossamer Condor have fulfilled that ageless dream. The Gossamer Condor is now hanging in the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum, next to the Apollo 11 moon capsule and the Wright Brothers plane. Hidden from curious eyes, a strange craft is developing. This man, his family and friends, are trying to build a man-powered airplane. This is Tyler McCready, who may not look like an airplane engine, but he is. And this is his father, Paul McCready, an expert in aerodynamics who set about building the kind of flying machine that men have dreamed of for centuries. From the earliest of times, we've wanted to fly like birds. In fact, the largest cash prize in aviation history, the Kramer Prize, was offered in 1959 by the Royal Aeronautical Society in London for the building of the first successful man-powered airplane. To win, a plane must fly a figure-eight course around two markers spaced a half mile apart. Dozens of serious designs have the same failing. The construction techniques quickly add more weight than a man's muscle can lift. They might get off the ground and then fly for a distance, but none could turn successfully in the air. The elaborate constructions had another major flaw. With the pilot peddling furiously inside, they flew. But the slightest crash was disastrous. In 1973, after 14 years of failures, the Kramer Prize was raised to 50,000 pounds. Nearly 100 decided to try putting together this giant wing on weekends with some help from his family and friends. Hope that's where we wanted it. The construction materials were as simple as the design. Thin aluminum tubing for stiffness, piano wire for support. The wing, designed by one of McCready's associates, Peter Lissiman, was covered with mylar and held together with tape. The huge plane would weigh next to nothing because it needed hardly any spars or ribs. It would just hang from the wires attached to the top post. Pull that end forward, Jim. The span of the giant wing was wider than a DC-9, and a small second wing was added in front for stability. Yet empty, the whole plane weighed only 55 pounds. Which way is the wind, Tyler, where you are? 
We'll just try it. When pushed, it floated. The bottom wires lifting the pilot's weight. Seven, dollars It was that incentive which got Paul McCready thinking about a man-powered plane. McCready spent much of a month-long summer vacation in 1976 hang gliding with his family. His teenage sons, Tyler and Parker, are highly trained hang glider pilots. McCready says he was daydreaming one day when the concept for a radically different man-powered plane came to him. From an article he'd written on hang glider safety, he knew a glider used just over one horsepower. He thought if he tripled the dimensions of a hang glider wing while keeping the weight the same, he could build a plane that would fly with only one-third horsepower. And that's just about the amount of energy that could be produced by a person pedaling a bicycle. McCready did that every design for a man-powered plane has been hampered by the same drawback the extremely weak power of the human engine. The strongest cyclist pedaling at full speed can barely produce half a horsepower. When the Wright brothers first put a combustion engine on their glider, they achieved what man couldn't do under his own power. Their engine was small, just 12 horsepower, but it produced over 30 times the power of a man. Today we've virtually conquered the realm of flight, but that early dream, the simple dream of man-powered flight, has remained as elusive as ever. In 